Hi, my name is Kim Sledge of the group Sister Sledge, and I have a testimony that I'd like to share with you. You know the verse that says, they will be won by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony? Well, it's my prayer that you will be won by the blood of the Lamb and by this testimony that I share with you tonight. In October of 2010, I was stricken with the H1N1 virus. And weeks into the virus, I contracted pneumonia. Four months later, I found myself in the intensive care heart unit being monitored 24 hours a day. In addition to the H1N1, I'd contracted pneumonia. And then I had become afflicted with a rare condition called coccidioid mycosis. It was so strange because I had no idea what was wrong with me. Where it came from was a spore in the desert. I went to visit my sister in Arizona and just walking up and down, the dust caused a spore to get into my lungs and that's where this had come from. So bizarre. Unfortunately, since this rare disease had not been diagnosed earlier, it had begun to attack my organs. So my lungs shrank, my diaphragm was raised, I could no longer sing, <laughs> imagine that, and my speaking became a whisper. And I was very upset because I love to talk. That was a major problem. The extremely harsh side effects of the prescribed medication would after all, after taking it over a year, as I was instructed to do, could very possibly leave me hairless, hearing less, and paralyzed from the waist down. I mean, my gosh, why would I want to take the medication? But it was either that or I just wouldn't be here. So I was devastated. And I wondered why this and how this had happened. Well, it was later revealed to me, <clears throat> it was an all-in-out attack to take me out. So every day was a true struggle and the days and the nights were very, very long, to say the least. The Lord was truly my daily and my nightly companion. However, I began to know him through all of this in a deeper and different way. He was my true sustainer in this very, very deep valley. He became my all and all. Praise God. Well, one afternoon, I had a visit from a dear husband and wife ministry team. I will never forget their words to me. They asked me, do you want to be healed or do you want to be whole? Well, I raised a shaky little gray hand and I said, I'd rather be whole, please. And that's what God decided. That was the turning point. The Holy Spirit began to move through the sweet demonstration of love from my family and friends and the many prayers of saints proclaiming the promises of God, the healing began. <clears throat> my daughter, my sweet daughter, Laura, wrote a series of healing scriptures on three by five cards, which we read day and night. God's word is true. It is quicker and sharper than any two-edged sword. And it does, what does it say? It, it goes between the, the, the spirit and the marrow. It just pierces right through. It pierces through straight to my spirit, my spirit man which is where the healing was already done. So my body had to line up. Sweet Laura was my guardian angel. Her sweet, sweet compassion flowed through her big caring eyes and her soft voice. And she would lay her little head on my shoulder and just sit quietly with me. And that taught me that love is patient and love is kind and love never fails. Well, my son Mark, he moved downstairs and stayed on the sofa as I slept with a, in a special bed, which was on the first floor because I couldn't get up and down the steps. I was too weak to walk. I will always remember how he would pop up and down during the night whenever he heard me breathe or move and he'd ask, Mom, you okay? And I'd say, I'm okay. He faithfully sold to my meds and doctor's visits. He took me to every single one. He became the true centurion I'd prayed for when he was born a true watchman on the wall. As the word says, watch and pray. And he certainly did. And then there was my youngest, Julie. I call her all joy. Julie brought me tea, laughter, sunshine, and great joy. 
her funny stories, her animated descriptions of what was going on outside of my healing room. Her zeal for life and her sparkling eyes prove the word that says, laughter doeth like a good medicine. Again, God's word, God's word was healing me and I was experiencing it day and night. My husband, all my husband's love, his medical wisdom, his devotion, his quiet strength brought me security, reassurance, and he brought me true comfort. He, like always, proved to be like our Heavenly Father, a solid rock for me to stand and now to rest on. I was truly blessed on my bed of healing. I thank the Lord Jesus for that. I thank you, Lord, because you are real. You are the healer. Well, 30 pounds thinner and gray and ashen in countenance, I strolled into my doctor's office and I proclaimed that Jesus was healing me and I no longer wanted to take the meds. Needless to say, he laughed at me. He thought it was absolutely crazy. So I compromised with him and told him I would finish the present bottle but not to expect me to continue to, to take a year's worth of refills, which was what I was supposed to do. So, of course, he thought it was crazy, and I was. I was crazy with joy because I knew. I knew the healing was mine, and all I needed to do was grab it and proclaim it. I did everything I felt the Spirit led me to do. I believe I ate more spinach than Popeye ever could imagine. The Holy Spirit told me what to eat. He told me what to drink. He told me when to rest. And he told me he loved me and that I was healed. When Jesus Christ went on that cross, I got healing and salvation all in one. Well, listening to the Psalms in Hebrew at night was one of my favorite things. I could sense his love and presence in the atmosphere. He was at work. And not only was he teaching me and healing me, but he was spending time with me and he was soothing me in, in my emotions and in my heart. Oh, it was so much more than just a physical healing. It was not only a physical healing, but an elevation. I call it a resurrection of new life. And that's what he did. It's exactly what God did. <clears throat> One day while recovering, I spoke with a dear friend who prayed with me over the phone. By the end of the call, the weight, the weighty presence of the Holy Spirit fell on me. And my friend said, I can see an angel standing over you right now. At that point, I whispered, I have to go. I can't continue to talk. I could feel that presence so strong. <clears throat> As I fell back on that bed, I could hear the Spirit's instruction to get up and finish the work. The work was a tour. And that tour was to begin on the 18th of September of 2011. The purpose was in day revival. Wow. It would carry restoration, reconciliation, which would bring revival. Whew. Well, we were to speak, sing, and serve. And worship would be our mode of operation. And love would be our banner. And we carry our testimony, the goodness, of the gospel of Yeshua, Jesus, our Messiah, throughout the world. And on September 18, 2011, that journey begins. Well, the journey started when our Lord and Savior went to that cross. And he bore our iniquities. And he bore our pain. And by his stripes, each one, we are healed, not only healed physically, but healed emotionally, healed spiritually, and healed forever, sustained, resurrected, and given eternal life. That is my testimony, and truly we are one, and we are saved by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. I pray that you will enter into the goodness and the gift that our Lord and Savior gave us on that cross. Be resurrected through his blood. God bless you. It's been my delight and joy to share that testimony because I am healed and I'm free. Talk to you again.
拜拜。